one from last month's update, Mars One has been hard at work behind the scenes over the past month, preparing for the regional interviews. A big step was made towards this when a contract was signed with Darno Smithson Productions, granting them the exclusive television rights to the selection and training of the astronauts for the mission. Now, sorting out the media arrangements is one of the reasons why it's taken so long to get the interviews to come about. Because as you can imagine, it's a logistics nightmare trying to organise interviews in 99 different countries and having them televised the world over without a major broadcasting company on your side. But now, I'm pleased to say, it's sorted. So let's talk a little about what this means. Darla Smithson Productions is a multi-award winning London-based media company that specialises in factual documentaries. It's owned by Endemol, which is an international television and broadcasting distribution company with operations in 30 different countries across the globe. In particular, this is an ideal arrangement, as it lets Mars One maintain full and complete control of the selection process, hopefully putting to rest some people's concerns that the legitimacy of the process could be compromised once it starts being televised by a desire to make it entertaining. But now Mars One can continue full steam ahead, maintaining full and complete control of the selection process, having it accurately portrayed and distributed to a large global audience starting on TV in the beginning of 2015. So I mentioned last month that there are now 705 candidates remaining in the selection process. So I want to talk a little briefly about who the candidates are and some typical demographics. So as you can see, overwhelmingly the remaining candidates are highly educated, with over 64% having a bachelor's degree or higher, and a good number of those having PhDs or medical degrees. Most of the candidates are located in the United States still, and the age range ranges from 18 up to 71, but with many more of the candidates towards the younger end of the spectrum. So a typical demographic would be a 30-year-old American male, for example. But remember that this is an international mission, and people from different continents will be represented. And in fact, there's even a chance, actually, of someone from Antarctica being represented, because there genuinely is someone currently based in Antarctica still in the selection process, which might give them a distinct advantage, bearing in mind its similarities to the temperatures we might see on Mars. In other news, there's been a number of short films and documentaries about the Mars One candidates that have been released over the last few months. One of the latest is called One Giant Leap, and interviews myself and a number of the other UK Mars One candidates. And it's an excellent documentary, so I highly recommend you take a look. I'll post a link to that below for you. And if you want to learn more about who the 705 candidates are, a full public list is now available. I'll also post a link to that below for you. Finally, if you're based in the UK, I'll be doing a number of public presentations and talks about Mars One over the coming months. The next one is going to be at the East Midlands Big Bang Fair in Derby on the 10th of July. So feel free to come along if you'd like to meet and discuss the mission with me. I'll also be resuming regular weekly videos on this YouTube channel starting from next week. So be sure to subscribe if you'd like to learn more about space, Mars, and for all the latest news and updates about the astronaut selection process. See you soon.